you have a special interest? You gonna, you gonna, like, I have one too. I'll go first and then. I have a special intention and any other council people or anyone else that would have, would like to have a special intention for their loved ones or friends, please uh, feel free to come up to the mic. Mr. William Bill O'Brien passed away today at the age of 97 years old. Mr. O'Brien was a resident of the city of Kenner. Mr. O'Brien also served his country in the Navy for over 30 years and was one of the last individuals to serve with President John F. Kennedy in the PT boats. He will be sadly missed by family and friends. Excuse me, I have a couple of intentions as well. Unfortunately, too many good people lately have died and I've been attending way too many funerals. Um, first of all, uh, one of the people in Chateau that uh, her husband died, Mr. Meyer, um, very, very lovely couple, have been together for so many years and he recently passed away. In fact, I went to the to visitation today for him. Mary Sharon Howland's granddaughter recently died. Uh, a young lady in her 20s, uh, unfortunately drowned. Um, it breaks your heart when someone that young with their whole life ahead of them has such a tragic accident. And finally, for Sergeant LaBarriere's mother who recently died. So if you could keep all of them in your prayers, it would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Councilman Reynard, please lead us in prayer. We can begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Almighty Father, whose great power and internal wisdom embraces the universe, watch over all policemen and law enforcement officers everywhere. Protect them from harm in the performance of their duty to stop crime, robbery, riots, and violence. We pray help them keep our streets and our homes safe day and night. We commend them to your loving care because their duty is dangerous. Grant them strength and courage in their daily assignments. Heavenly Father, protect these brave men and women. Grant them your almighty protection. Unite them safely with their families after duty has ended. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Councilman Connolly, will you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Chairman, you have a quorum this evening. In accordance with Council Resolution Number B14550, please be advised that all cellular telephones, pages, beepers, and other devices of this nature must be deactivated or silenced throughout the Council meeting. Mr. Chairman, this evening I've received a request to amend the agenda this evening to include Item 3E, Application Number 1913-15, Custom Cruisers to hold a public gathering on September 27, 2015, from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. for a benefit car show at Lake Town. Motion by Councilman Connolly, second by Councilman Carroll, to suspend the council rules. All members, please vote. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 7-0 to suspend your rules. Motion by Councilman Connolly, second by Councilman Carroll, to amend the agenda to include item 3A. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to object? Please come forward. Hearing none, all council members please vote. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 7-0. Under your consent agenda this evening, we have item one, approval of minutes, the regular council meeting of September 3rd, 2015. Item two is approval of alcoholic beverage permit applications. Item 2A is a resolution granting an alcoholic beverage permit to Deutsches House to have deliveries on October 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th of 2015 and to sell alcoholic beverages on October 9th and 10th, 2015 at 415 Williams Boulevard being property owned by the city of Kenner, Louisiana. And City of Kenner and Kenner, Louisiana. Item 2B is a resolution granting an alcoholic beverage permit to Deutsch's House to have deliveries on October 12th, 13th, 14th, and 15th of 2015 and to sell alcoholic beverages on October 16th and 17th of 2015 at 415 Williams Boulevard being property owned by the City of Kenner in Kenner, Louisiana. Item 2C is a resolution granting an alcoholic beverage permit to Deutsch's House to have deliveries on October 19th, 20th, and 21st 
and 22nd of 2015 and to sell alcoholic beverages on October 23rd and 24th of 2015 at 415 Williams Boulevard being property owned by the City of Kenner in Kenner, Louisiana. Item 2D is a resolution granting an alcoholic beverage permit to Deutsch's House for delivery and return of alcoholic beverages on October 26th, 27th, and 28th of 2015 at 415 Williams Boulevard, being property owned by the City of Kenner in Kenner, Louisiana. Item 3 is approval of bingo and public gathering applications. Item 3A is application number 1903-15, New Orleans Bicycle Club, to hold a public gathering on October 4, 2015 from 7 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. for the purpose of bicycle races at the Esplanade Mall. Item 3B is application number 1906-15, Denise Mitchell to hold a public gathering on October 3, 2015 from 1 p.m. to 9 p.m. for the purpose of a birthday party at 309 Farrar Avenue. Item 3C is application number 1907-15, the City of Kenner to hold a public gathering on October 17, 2015 from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. for the purpose of a trunk or treat slash movie in the park at Mus Bertolino Stadium. Item 3D is application number 1910-15, Deutsch's House to hold the public gathering on October 9th, 10th, 16th, 17th, 23rd, 24th of 2015 for the purpose of a festival in Rivertown in Kenner, Louisiana. Item 3E is application number 1913-15, Custom Cruisers to hold a public gathering on September 27th, 2015 from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. for, for a benefit car show at Lake Town. Item 4 is correspondence Reports from the mayor, CAO, or department heads, we have none. Item five is acceptance rejection of bids requiring an expenditure of less than $5,000, we have none. Item six is change orders requiring an expenditure of less than $5,000, we have none. Item seven is acceptance of committee findings for final passage, we have none. Item eight is resubdivision ordinances for final passage, item 8A. Is summary ordinance number 11,929, an ordinance approving the plan of resubdivision of lots 314A, 314B, and former portion of Illinois Avenue into lots 314A1, 314A2, and 314B1, Highway Park Subdivision. That concludes your consent agenda. Motion by Councilman Carroll, second by Councilman Segura to approve the consent agenda. Councilman, please vote. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 7-0 for your consent agenda. Under the public appearance agenda this evening, we have item 9, public hearings for final passage. Item 9A is a public hearing regarding summary ordinance number 11,928, an ordinance creating the North 1300 Block Veterans Boulevard Economic Development District, State of Louisiana, defining the boundaries thereof from which area local sales tax and hotel occupancy tax increments will be determined and used to finance economic development projects in accordance with and as authorized by Part 2 of Chapter 27 of Title 33 of the Louisiana Revised Statutes of 1950 as amended and providing for other matters in connection with the foregoing. Motion by Councilman Carroll, second by Councilman Epistatus to open up the public hearing. Is there anyone in the audience to speak? Please vote on your open hearing, please. Please vote on the opening of the public hearing. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 7-0 to open your hearing. Now, is there anyone wanting to speak on the agenda? Seeing none, motion to close the public hearing agenda. Motion by Councilman Carroll, second by Councilman Impostado to close the public hearing agenda. Please vote. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 7-0 to close your hearing. Motion by Councilmember Carroll, second by Impostado on approval. Please vote. We vote. Please vote. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 7 0 to approve. Item 10 is opening of bids. We have none. Item 11 is reclassification of zoning for final passage. We have none. Item 12 is other ordinances for final passage. Item 12A is summary ordinance number 11,927, an ordinance amending section 6-105F3 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Kenner, Louisiana, to provide for adjustments to the taxicab fare structure for transportation originating from Louis Armstrong, New Orleans International Airport. Motion by Councilwoman DeFranchez, second by Councilman Conley. I don't see any lights. Councilman, please vote to approve. 
<clears throat> Mr. Chairman, motion passes 7 0. Item 13 is resolutions and motions by council members. Item 13A is a resolution declaring certain Pontchartrain Beach movable property as surplus property that is no longer needed for public use or purpose and authorizing a private sale of the surplus property for the sum of $1,000, all in accordance with LSARS 33-4712F. Mr. Chairman and the council, we've received a request to remove this item this evening. Motion by Councilman Reynard, second by Councilman Klein to remove. Councilman, please vote. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 7-0 to remove. Item 14 is items removed from the consent agenda. We have none. Item 15 is acceptance of contracts and similar matters approved by the mayor. Item 15A is summary ordinance number 11,930, an ordinance approving an increase to the authorized expenditure limit for purchases of lights, sirens, accessories, and installation utilizing state contract number 408186 through Vehicle Parts and Equipment Company Incorporated doing business as headquarters 911 to an amount not to exceed $300,000 annually. Motion by Councilman Impostata, second by Councilman Segur to accept. Councilman, please vote. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 7 0. Item 15B is summary ordinance number 11,931. An ordinance accepting the lowest response bid received from RAMJ Construction LLC for a two year contract to provide drainage maintenance on an as needed basis in accordance with seal bid number 15 6286 and an amount not to exceed $1 million annually for the Department of Public Works. Motion by Councilman Conley, second by Councilwoman DeFranchez. No discussion. Councilmen, please vote. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 7 0. Item 15C is summary ordinance number 11,932. An ordinance accepting the lowest response bid received from Beacon Air Condition Heating and Refrigeration Incorporated in the amount of $38,650 for the removal of old air conditioned unit and the furnishing and installation of a new air conditioned unit at the Wood Lake Gymnasium in accordance with seal bid number 15 6287 for the Department of Parks and Recreation. Motion by Councilman Raynard, second by Councilman Klein. Councilman Raynard, you have the floor, sir. You good? Councilman, please vote. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 7 0. Item 15D is a resolution approving an amendment to the Cooperative Endeavor Agreement with the State of Louisiana regarding drainage improvements along Idaho Avenue, 26th Street to West Napoleon Canal, planning and construction, which reflects a reallocation of funds to better meet the needs of the project. Motion by Councilman Segur, second by Councilman Klein. No discussion. Councilman, please vote. Mr. Chairman, motion passes 7-0. Item 16 is ordinances and resolutions in summary for first reading. Item 16A is an ordinance amending ordinance number 2427 adopted on December 4, 1978, entitled Comprehensive Zoning Ordinance of the City of Kenner, more particularly amending and rezoning lots 72 through 92A, 17B, and 17C, square 174, and squares 175, 176, and 177 of Veteran Heights Subdivision from GO General Office to SI Special Industrial and directing, authorizing, and empowering the planning director to alter and amend the official zoning map of the City of Kenner. Item 16B is an ordinance amending ordinance number 5789, approving a planned unit development for a multifamily residential development located on parcel A3, A1, Dash A1, Canes Brule Subdivision in Kenner, Louisiana. Item 16C is an ordinance accepting the lowest response bid received from Fresh Cut Landscaping Incorporated for certain repairs to the Woodlake Estates Fountain, bid item number 13 only, in accordance with letter bid 15 1535, and awarding a contract to Fresh Cut Landscaping Incorporated in the amount of $14,978. Item 16D is an ordinance accepting the lowest response bid received from American Roofing Supply in the amount of $5,999.75 for the purchase of 125 gallons of white GACO silicone roof coating for the Arthur P. Clay Community Resource Center in accordance with telephone bid number T15-2332 for the Department of Public Works. 
Item 15 E is an ordinance accepting the lowest response to bid received from RNS Corporation for the purchase, installation, and integration of one 32 inch MTI touchscreen control panel in accordance with seal bid number 15 6293 in the amount of $63,300 for the Kenner Police Department. Item 16F is an ordinance accepting the lowest response bid received from Peretz Men's Wear Incorporated for the purchase of uniforms and related services on an as needed basis in accordance with seal bid number 15 6290 in an amount not to exceed $60,000 annually Thank you. for the Kenner Police Department. Item 16G is an ordinance authorizing the purchase of 10 customer relationship management software licenses in the amount of $7,165 from Publish or Parish Incorporated for the Kenner Police Department. Item 16H is an ordinance declaring the public necessity for the acquisition of a servitude situated on a portion of West Napoleon Avenue, Canal No. 4, right-of-way, Highway Park Subdivision for installation and maintenance of sewage facilities and providing for related matters. Item 16I is an ordinance ratifying the emergency placement of a traffic signal mast arm located on West Esplanade Avenue by Jack B. Harper Electrical LLC at the cost of $21,035.60 for the Department of Public Works. Item 16J is an ordinance amending ordinance number 10,878 to increase the maximum square footage allowed for a new sign identifying a subdivision and to eliminate the maximum size requirement for the lettering on the size or structure. Item 17 is reports from the council and our special committees. I have uh, one thing that I'd like to say that on Saturday, the Lincoln Manor Playground subdivision and all of the citizens that have lived in the Lincoln Manor sub subdivision for well over 50 years, we're having a festival, family, family reunion, a lot of different things going on. So if you have an opportunity to stop by all of the directors, uh, the the administration and all of us to stop by. I, I believe it's from 10 until 7 or 8. There also is a function for on Sunday that they could be going to church at one of the churches in Lincoln Manor, but definitely the playground. So if you have the time to fit it in your schedule, we'll definitely look forward for you guys to, to stop by. Councilman Impostata, you have the floor, sir. I wanted to follow up on what's been an ongoing issue in District 5, uh, mainly for anyone who might be watching the broadcast, um, as I don't know if there's anyone here from District 5, but in the Grand Lake neighborhood, there's been an ongoing problem related to flooding off the levee wall. Uh, we had a meeting today with the Corps of Engineers, a series of engineers, and then the Southeast Levee Protection Authority, and it appears that there is a, a permanent solution that is uh, going to be put in place uh, that will be installed within the next four to six months uh, along the levee wall behind Grand Lake Boulevard, yeah, first. Yeah. <clears throat> behind Grand Lake on the south side between the Parish Line Canal and uh, the Parish Line Pump Station and West Esplanade. And so we do have a, a permanent solution that it looks like the Corps of Engineers is going to be implementing that's going to cost uh, several million dollars to install uh, at their expense, not the city of Kenner's. Uh, but we're very happy that this this is every all engineers involved, including the Levy Protection Authority, are confident that this is going to eliminate the flooding risk to these homes and eliminate a future problem. So, uh, anyone that would like more information, please contact me directly, and we'll address them. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Madam Clerk, I think that's no one item else. eighteen is new business. We have none. Item 19 is unfinished business and a motions to reconsider or remove from a tabled position. We have none. Item 20 is persons wishing to address the council on special subject matters. Yes, ma'am. We have three today. Mr. Al Morella. I thought I was second. I thought there was someone before me. Uh, they erased their name, Mr. That's Morella. okay. Well, all right then. Thank you anyway, Always Greg. first in our heart, Al. Al Morella, 4260 East Loyola Drive, 5th District. 43 years. Uh, I want to comment on two items on the agenda, although 13A has been removed, but I still want to comment on it anyway. Uh, I believe when you got a uh, movable property like this that belongs to the taxpayers, it should be put up for at an auction. Uh, people, the citizens of Canada who the property belongs to, they should have an opportunity to uh, have an auction to bid on this uh, property Whoever might, whoever might want it, other than a private sale, okay? So that's number one. Uh, 16B 
on the first reading, I know that's first reading, but I can comment on it anyway at this portion of the meeting. Uh, 16B, is this the project that's being proposed where the old Hollywood 9 theater is in the Esplanade Mall? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say it again. I've already addressed that at this podium, and I'll say it again. I'm opposed to that development, and I stand behind the people who came below 250%. My uh, position has not changed on that, and it's not going to. And I stated my reasons when I was up here last time, and I'll gladly state those reasons again when it comes before this council. Now, in closing, uh, I'd like to say uh, to the council and the administration, uh, Mr. Robert Miles, who uh, was a longtime resident of Kenner for 33 years, uh, he don't live in Kenner anymore, that's why I say was. Uh, he's in the hospital, uh, he's got a procedure, that he's gonna be going through tomorrow, but he's in Ashna, right back here in Kenna. So I would like everyone to keep Mr. Miles and his family in their prayers, because he was a long time resident of Kenna for 33 years, as a matter of fact. Okay, any, anybody got any comments, any question? I do. Al, is he at the, uh, he's at our Ashna? Yes, sir. Ashna back in Kenna, yes, sir. Thank anybody you. else? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Morell, and we will keep Mr. Miles in our prayers. Mr. Nestor. Mr. Nestor, please state your name and address, sir. My name is Edward Nestor, 3349 Antoine Wategny Boulevard. I've just been recently elected as president of the newly reinstated uh, Keynes Brule Civic Association. I wasn't sure if I was allowed to speak at the first reading. I just want to make sure that you guys know that we will have an enormous amount of information for you guys uh, in letter form and comments at the, uh, at the next meeting. And we are basically totally against it because we think the premise that they're using to get the people here, the very people that they want here are not coming here. They're gonna be in New Orleans. The young upwardly mobile professional is gonna be in New Orleans. They do not wanna come to Kenner. We, all of us probably know somebody. Secondly, we are realist. And if the thing is gonna be passed, we have several things that we're gonna send letters to you guys that we would ask you all to consider as part of a, a, um, a, a redevelopment or a re, re, uh, uh, structuring of the, of the PUD. So, any questions of us? Yeah. Yes, sir, Mr. Uh, Connolly would like to speak, Mr. Nestor. I'd just yes. like to ask, did you say you're gonna bring all this stuff to the next meeting or are you gonna give it to us prior to the next meeting? Uh, no, we're gonna start sending you stuff. Uh, uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, I've already sent a letter to you and I'm not sure if anybody else That'd has. be great, thank you. Uh, but thank you, Mr. Nestor. We look forward to the information. Mr. and I apologize if I mispronounce your name, Hattikard? Hold on, Greg, Councilman. Oh, sorry about that, Councilman Epistata. Yeah, I just Mr. Nestor. And to anyone from Kansas Roulette who's here, I would just ask, echoing what Councilman Conley said, the sooner we can get any of, the, any of those concerns, which we've gotten, a, we've gotten a few, you know, several, the sooner you can get them to us, the sooner we can try and take some action on it. Um, I understand, but... Sure, understood. Just the sooner you can get that to us, we'd appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Nestor. And they're gonna make me say this name again. Mr. <laughs> Brian Potticard. Potticary. Potticare. Potticare. Close. Potticare. Name and address, Mr. Potticare. Brian Potticary, 4848 Quincy Street, Metro, Louisiana. This is involving ordinance number 1369. It's the ordinance of uh, the ABO card, which I am now a proud owner of. But uh the manner in which I have to go about it is very difficult, as well as it's not very well enforced in the city of Kenner. Uh, so for one, they've told me that it's only for the city of Kenner, but you have to drive out to West Bank to get your background check, that was 50 bucks, then you come pay 40 bucks for the ABO card, plus $30 to have the application notarized, that's $120. I'm a bartender at a restaurant that's a whole day's, I didn't even make that much on Monday night. Um, so that's out the door. Anywho, my problems with some of the things written down is he must be a person of good character and reputation at 18 years of age. 
Now, I'm not sure if this applies to people at your local grocery store as well, or say Walmart, where they do sell alcohol and wine. Um, because I promise you, not everybody that checks you out over there and sells the wine to you or the beer, whatever, uh, is not all 18 years old. And some of the people, even at the Shell Station here on 25th Street and Williams Boulevard, I asked the lady there if she had an ABO car. She said no. And I asked her how long she had been working there. She said since 2007, so obviously she's not enforced. And then I didn't know if it was just for the city of Kenner or if it was all for Jefferson Parish because there's some miscommunication on that. And a couple of people that I have talked to that are bartenders in Jefferson Parish, one even told me that hers has been expired for 10 years. So again, the enforcement of this particular co ordinance is, let's say, very mishandled. Also, um, it says that every alcoholic beverage handling employee shall obtain a certificate of qualifications or ABO employee card prior to entering into employment. And then I'm told that it take, you get a 45 day span. So I'm kind of vague on that, so I don't know. And plus it also says he must be a good person. It doesn't count she, so that means every girl bartender that works that I work with doesn't. That's a little bit of gender discrimination. Um, so again, there's Pro improper wording, plus I don't think it's necessary since I'm already recognized by the state when I get my Louisiana Responsible Vendors Permit. I don't understand why just for this one town, and because I worked in this town for a good 18 years as a bartender, um, and this is the first I've ever heard about it was a month and a half ago. So, any questions? Mr. Petticard, there's a couple of people who would like to speak to you. Councilman Klein, you have the floor. Okay, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, can you tell us when the meeting is with Cannes Roulet, oh, wait. a civic association? Wait, wait. There's talking about him. Oh, well. Not, a, not about the ABO, no. Okay. okay, well. I'm sorry. I have a, I, I just want to make I a comment. comment. Yes, sir. Councilwoman DeFranchise would like to speak. I just have one comment. You know, there's a generic he. I was a, I actually had to do the, the bylaws for, an enti for all the uh, Jefferson Council of Aging. And one person after we spent six months on it wanted to change every he to he or she. And I'm sorry, I'm a woman. I don't get offended when it says he. I understand it includes me. And I just want to point that out. There's such a thing as political correctness taken to the nth degree where all we do is spend a lot of money to, to make changes that are totally ridiculous. And that's my personal opinion. You are entitled to yours and I respect yours but I just think it's a waste of money but to have to go through and change all paperwork to say he's slash she. My personal opinion, I'm not offended as a woman when it says he, I know it includes me. Thank I'm you. I'm just, uh, you, thank you. Uh, I understand that. Um, I'm just a little irritable about the process that I had to go through and uh, the money that I had to pay for it. And uh, I think it's unnecessary. So Mr. Mr. Pettiker, I just wanna say that you know, in the age of political correctness, uh, everyone has, you know, we, we all have to catch up and do better with that. And hopefully, even with our laws and bylaws, we will, as we revise them, we will include your comments, which, which are valid. But just to say that when we are the city of Kenner, we are allowed to make certain laws that we believe will be beneficial to our citizens. And, uh, and, and I'm proud that we do that because, you know, a lots of time, imitation is the highest form of flattery we look at other municipalities and we follow them, and I'm sure there may be others that may be following us on this. Just, just to say that the 18-year-olds and the 21-year-old for cigarettes, it is a law, and I think most establishments follow it. Um, I don't think it's, in, it's, in, it's going rampant where there are a lot of individuals who are, who are being sold alcohol or cigarettes who are not the proper age. Because most places I go, they, they do card and ask for your age. People that are actually selling the alcohol. Are you talking about just selling? Yes. That's the person who is actually selling the alcohol and cigarettes. It says, according to this ordinance, they should be at least 18 years old. Mm -hmm. Okay? Like I said, not all you kids that work at Winn-Dixie or, or Walmart are 18. So that's also a mis not just a misprint, but a, an error. And again, it's not very much enforced at all in the city of Kenner. Because like I said, I talked to a lady that works at Shell Station down the street. She's been working for since 2007, never even heard of the ABO card. Well, it's been, around, it's been around for a couple of years. We have had the law. So how often or when it's enforced, I guess that'd be kind of almost, I don't want to say impossible, it is a law. 
and we will address it as a law. And if, so, if it's brought up at that establishment, they will have to be fined accordingly if they are found to be not following the law. So, you know, until it's changed, this is, this is our law, and we will be, you know, bound to uphold it. That's what I was hoping for, is to make it change. Well, change sometimes is slow, Mr. I Penn. I appreciate that. <laughs> I know that. And oh, uh, just get rid of it altogether. We appreciate your comments. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now, Mr. Castro, Mr. Councilman Klein, now you would like to address? Okay, please. Well, we actually don't, didn't have one at this moment. The uh, Louisiana Secretary of State and I, well, not him, but their office and I um, just got reinstated yesterday, uh, fully active in good standing. And we were also told that by the, the, the office, commercial division office, that the election of the board now can act in a responsible and, and substantive way. We didn't want to do anything and make any decisions as a board until we had complete um, uh, acceptance by the Secretary of State. They gave us that in both the, the fact that we were elected and were ready to take charge of the reinstatement. It came in yesterday. I, I was going to find out what was going on tonight with, with where, we, where we stood with the first reading and that we were going to start making the appropriate uh, the appropriate uh, meetings to, to get everybody on board. Okay, and have you talked? And I will let you know and any other council person that wants to know, I'll be happy to let you guys know any meeting that we have and Please, all of y'all come. Let us all know, and have you seen the John Sessom's letter and Mr. Wesley's uh, letter yes, also? You have? Okay. Yes, sir. Good. And I, I th again, I think I sent you guys, well, I know I sent you guys, I don't know if you've seen it yet, one yesterday. Once I knew we were now a reinstated organization and we had some legitimacy, I, I, uh, right. I sent it as, a, as that. So. Right. Okay, well, you can contact either me or uh, Councilman DeFrancis. We will do that as Conley. soon as I know. Keep telling yeah. Any, anything else I can do for you? Yeah, we'll talk to you after the meeting. Fine. Oh, thank okay. you very much. Thanks again, Mr. Nestor. I, sometimes people forget to sign the, uh, the roll. If there's anyone that did not sign it, you know, we're, we have a little time. You could come up and uh, obviously address. If not, <laughs> okay. We got one. Name and address, sir. Morgan. What's your address? 3901, Delaware. 3901, that's my, that's my address. And I would like to say. I would like to say. Maybe you can say it for her. Keith Raina, not Raina. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, I apologize, sir. I will. Funny. I will correct that in the future. <laughs> <laughs> I think your three minutes might be up, sir. I don't know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. Whereas it is fitting and proper to commemorate the anniversary of the signing of the Constitution of the United States of America, as it is one of the most important documents of our country's history. To accord official recognition, the week of September 17th through the 23rd was declared Constitution Week in 1955. Whereas to observe signing of the Constitution of 1787, the seven chapters of the Southeast District of the Daughters of the American Revolution in Louisiana join in a nationwide celebration during this historic week. Bayou Lafouche, New Orleans, Spirit of 76, Bucare, Oliver Pollock, and St. Tam Tammany. Whereas the City of Kenner hereby commends the Southeast District, formerly District 4, for honoring this remarkable document that outlines self-government of the people, where hereby urge all citizens to affirm the ideas of our forefathers by vigilantly protecting the freedoms guaranteed through the, uh, through the guardians of our liberties, the Constitution of the United States of America. 
Now, therefore, I, Michael S. Jenny, by the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Kenner, with the entire Kenner Council, do hereby declare September 17th to the 23rd of 2015, Constitution Week. Thank you very much, ladies. I am Bonnie Cook. I uh, represent Francois Delery chapter, which I don't think it was on the proclamation. I am a vice president general um, at, for the National Society, as well as a local member. And this is the 60th anniversary of when the National Society Daughters of the American Revolution has issued proclamations. So we are very, very proud of this. It's under public law 915 and it's uh, issued from the President of the United States all down. And we're always pleased to come here to Kenner. You all are always so gracious to all of us. Thank you so much for doing this. Oh, wow.